salutations. It's just me, another guy in the Southern Rockies, making YouTube videos about things. But today's thing is something pretty important. It's using the Streamflow gauge and trying to understand what those numbers mean to help plan for a better day. So it's something that I've used for a while. I've worked in fly shops for half my life and still continue to do so after a series of poor decisions and poor life choices. But here I am. So hopefully this helps. I use the Streamflow gauge a lot personally, whether I'm going to fish on my own or I'm going to take clients. So what's, what's nice about using the Streamflow gauge is you can, from the comfort of your house eating Cheetos, you can hop on and have a good idea of what the river is doing. So nothing's more unfortunate than driving two or three hours to a river only to get there and realize that it looks like Willy Wonka's Chocolate River. So this is a great tool you, you can use to avoid that situation. And hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll be able to implement this in some further fishing trips. I know it's been a big help to me. So a couple key notes is that these gauges are measured in CFS, and that stands for cubic feet a second. So flow is measured in cubic feet a second, and it's different per river system. So for example, here in New, northern New Mexico, a flow of around 200 CFS and below is a good fishable flow on the Rio Grande, whereas on a bigger west coast river, you know, in Washington or in Oregon, that could be an environmental crisis. So it's important to know what the ideal fishing flows are for the river that you plan to fish next. The best way to do that is just call your local fly shop and the guys and gals there will be happy to kind of give you a CFS window. And then once you have that, you can look at the gauge and hopefully have a great day fishing. So let's uh, dive right into it. Okay, so the quickest way to find a streamflow gauge for the area that you want to fish is just to Google it. So USGS streamflow and then the state that you live in or the state that you plan to fish. So we'll click this and we'll have an adventure together. So it's going to bring you to a page just like this. So it's kind of it's going to be important to understand what drainage that the creek or the river is that you want to fish. So here in New Mexico, we have a couple. Um, we're just going to make things simple and dive right into the Rio Grande. And it's important to note that these gauges are listed from upstream to downstream and upstream to downstream through the basin. So these gauges are just following the river down. So the first listing is going to be the Rio Grande near Cerro. That's going to be the first gauge on the river system. So it's important also to understand where these gauges are located. You want to make sure that you're checking the right gauge for the area that you want to fish. But let's just dive right into reading the stream gauge. We'll keep it simple. All right, so here it is. So flow is going to be measured over here. And as you can see, it's going to be listed in CFS for the discharge. These yellow triangles are going to represent the average flow for this time of year. And that's important because just because the the blue line, which is the river, isn't at the average, doesn't necessarily mean a, pot, a bad or a good fishing flow. This is just an average. You can see right here that the gauge has been in place for 68 years. So just something to keep in mind. And then scrolling down here, you can see exactly what the river is at in terms of flow. You can also see its historic low and historic high, and as well as the averages. Right now, we can see it's sub 200 CFS, which is going to be a great flow for the Rio Grande. Another thing to note on these CFS charts is that this little block is going to represent a day. So these are all 24-hour cycles, so you can start to understand what the river is doing throughout the day. You can see little bumps and spikes, and it's important to understand you know, what this is going to mean for this particular river. So a small spike in CFS isn't going to blow out the Rio Grande. You, know, you can see right here, it lo you know, there looks like a spike of maybe 40 CFS. I'm just approximating. I'm, not, I'm a fishing guide. I'm not a rocket scientist. But, you know, for the Rio Grande, that's okay. That's not going to stain the water. However, on a small creek that usually flows, for example, maybe 15 CFS, a big sp a spike of 40 CFS could blow it out. So just kind of knowing, you know, what your river is doing. So, you know, we have a little drop, but this looks good. The other thing you can use a gauge for is to look for trends. So you can see this last week the river stayed in between 150 and 200 CFS. So good fishable flow. What would alarm me to see is a big spike coming up, and that could indicate the river is going to be blown out. So just getting a loose feel, feel for, for what everything's doing. So it's it's also important just to know how your river is going to react and then to understand where stream flow gauges are. So 
So the other thing to note are where tributaries are going to be on the main stem. It's important to sometimes identify maybe a problem tributary. So if you know that you're going to be fishing, let's say, below the confluence of the Rio Grande and the Red River, you're also going to want to check the flow of the Red River just to be doubly sure. This gauge, because it's lowered down, it's the last Red River gauge, is going to be the lowest gauge on the system. And we can see here that the Red is definitely a smaller river. You can notice that there's a, a lower amount of volume. Again, we've seen some drops that could be from cold weather and some other factors, but again, it's hovering around this 40 CFS mark, so flows are stable. So up to the Red River, it's not going to be blown out. So thank you for watching, and I hope that helps. Just a quick recap, CFS are not the same for all rivers, so rivers like Montana, Wyoming are going to have bigger flows. So that's just something to keep in mind. Our rivers here in northern New Mexico are a little bit smaller. The other thing to keep in mind as well is the location of the stream gauge and using that USGS chart that we went over, it makes it easy because the higher the gauge is on the chart, the higher it is on that particular body of water. And then third, just try to identify a problem tributary. So that could save you a lot of headache in the future. So here in northern New Mexico, the on the Rio Grande, that tributary would be the red. Snow can burn off a little bit quicker when it gets warm or a rain event could happen in the higher elevations, which would send mud down the Red River and into the Rio Grande. So if I know that I'm gonna fish below the confluence of the Red River, I like to check to make sure there's not a big spike indicating a discoloration of the water and a muddy main stem of the Rio Grande. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, and thanks for watching.